But regarding pro football focus, they say the Lions are going to go four and 12. They say the Lions are one of the five worst teams in football. And I just, I can't do that. I don't either. You know, when I look at the Lions, I see a big M. And the M stands for mediocrity. I do not think they're going to be terrible. I do not think they're going to be good. I think they'll probably win a game or two they shouldn't and lose uh, a couple games they uh, should not have too. But I think this is for uh, for Quinn, and I'm going to throw wood in this too, that this is really a two-year process to try to make this team competitive, and maybe in the third year it might work. See, that's the thing is I don't think they're going to be competitive if, if competitive means challenging for – playoffs or or an nfc central uh, excuse me nfc north championship but in the third year they should if they no. do it right see i th- i think look if if what pro football focus is talking about happens i think you're going into the draft and you're taking a quarterback and then matthew stafford goes into his last year unsigned and you groom your quarterback and then you're starting all over again you're talking about f- a first round yeah he, he this team goes four and twelve with Matthew Stafford. How could you possibly justify a hundred and thirty-five million dollar extension? You kidding me? Well, it's something you or I would not do. But, but they will. I, I, I am. I am eighty percent sure right. that they would do that because uh, I, look, I don't think Stafford's going to have the type of season that would warrant four and twelve. So that's one. So you will see potential and stuff like that. And plus, I think Mrs. Ford. I think the Quins. I think they like Matthew Stafford. They still see potential in him, and that the flaws of the team are not his fault. At least a lot of them are not his fault. Can I? Can I ask a question here? It's not related to this topic. It's just you just brought something up, and it it unnerves me. It mm-hmm. shouldn't. It shouldn't bother me the way it does, but yet and still it does. You just said it. it really pisses me off. Oh well, they still see a lot of potential in Matt Stafford. He's headed into his eighth season. Amen. Eighth. Eighth. Like, I, I just, does anyone around here actually believe there's more potential in the tank for this guy heading into his eighth season? It's almost like Stafford gets this permanent pass for years. Oh, he's, you know, he's only 25. But, but he's been in the league for five years. But he's only 25. All right, he's been in the league for six, seven years. But he's only 27. Now, now he's headed into his eighth season, and people are still talking about him like he's a third-year player. Mike, he's only 34. Oh, he's only, yeah. <laughs> so we're yeah. going to get later Listen, on. Uh, Philip, Philip Rivers and Peyton Manning, uh, they played well, well into the 30s. Why, why does Matthew Stafford get this pass? Oh, he's still got lots of potential. Does he? Does he? At what point do you look at a guy and just go, eh, that's what he is? Tell me. Well, here's- Tell me what magic resides in him. Okay. It has been a pass for his entire career. I will admit that. But now I think they see a rebirth. And and, and by the way, the end of the season, they either see the rebirth or they, or they won't. The rebirth is Cooter, the offensive coordinator. He's, you know, uh, Stafford, they'll say he's been under bad systems, that ones that don't work. They had a good working relationship. Mike, this should be All right, hold on the up. make or break season. But you well, are, you really no, know. You've, you already did it, though. What? You just described every issue I have with this city and its fans. It's never been about Stafford. Blame the talent, blame the organization, blame an injury, blame bad luck, try to spin his numbers. It's never about him. It's never been about him. Nobody ever just looks at it and goes, you know what? He's not that good. Because here's what happens when you do it. Oh, but he has a big arm, or oh, he's still got potential, or oh, remember 2011, or oh, blame Millen, oh, blame May. It's never about him. You're correct. No player gets more excuses created for him than Matthew Stafford. Here's another. Oh, oh, at the end of those eight games last year, it was the oh, this guy's not that bad. Oh, this guy just needed coaching. Oh, let's see what he does this year. But Mike, if he sucks this year. There's really no other excuses. The bottom line is I don't think it matters how he plays. There's no way they go 4-12. and 12. I just don't see them being that bad. And they have somewhat of a defense. They've got some good players. They probably got one of the top 10 corners in the league. They have arguably the best defensive end in the league. They got a linebacking crew as a unit that's probably uh, very, very uh, attractive to most teams. 
They've got a couple of good safety. Mm -hmm. They've got people. I, I just, look, man, at some point, you got to let go of this potential thing. And Jamie and Wojo hit on this, and I thought it was a really nice job, all joking aside. They did a really nice job with this because it is the question. What do you, the fan, do, do the fans actually have a level of expectation for Matthew Stafford any longer? Headed into his eighth season? I mean, does anyone really expect him to jump out and become one of the five best QBs in the league? Is there anyone who still believes that with this guy? Or better yet, what what exactly is his upside? Tell me what the best you can get out of Matthew Stafford is. Because I, I just, I don't see it. He has games. He'll even give you stretches. But overall, you're eight years deep. I mean, aren't you what your record says you are? Aren't you what your numbers say you are? Yes, but. Oh, here it is. Yeah, hey, but, but. but. Here's my butt, buddy. Now, there's always a butt with this guy. No, the, the butt is because of the organization. The butt is some, some coaches, some players, and maybe even a quarterback have failed because of the organization. I did see signs, although it was against inferior competition at the end of the season, that you want to see what more he has. You want to see if he is a guy that can win a playoff game. You want to see if he's a guy that you want to re-sign. I think these first six, I'm going to say six to eight games, very, very important. After that, you will know 100% if this is the guy or, or if he's not. Won't matter. People still make excuse for him. That's all this town's good for when it comes to Matthew Stafford. Excuses. Bunch of real creative artists out there. Oh, it doesn't really work like that, no. Do you know why? I No, I don't. It's one number. 5,000. 5,000 is in the back of people's mind because that's how we pass for more than 5,000 oh, yards. Good Lord. And we know, Michael, listen, look at me. We know a lot of that was fake. Right. But a lot of people don't. No, I know. They only look at 5,000. It just frustrates me. And here, I, you know, I'll defend them and say, no, there's no way they're, they're one of the five worst teams in the league and pro football focus. They do a great job. I just don't see it. But the Stafford stuff, you brought it up, and it just it grinds me. Oh, you know, Martha and uh, the organization, they like him, and they think he's got a lot of potential. And you're like, but, but, eight years into your career, your potential's gone. You are what you are. But? You saw what he was the first eight games of the season. You yeah. saw he was the second. And here, eight. and here's what it ends up being: right in the middle, not as bad as the beginning, not as good as the end. What do you end up with? Average, maybe a little above average. If I'm going to break down quarterbacks, right, and you go, hey, here are your Hall of Famers, the perceived top guys, the the the, the creme de la creme. Then you got another class of guys that are really bleeping good, and nobody would nobody would look at you sideways if you said, I like him as my quarterback, or mm -hmm. I wish my team had him. Then you get into the third deck of cards, guys that have been given a lot of ability but just don't produce at that level, which is probably where Stafford is. The fourth level is the guys that are just average, guys that you know aren't the future, but they're better than the next tier, which is dog bleep, okay, dog bleep quarterbacks. And then the fifth tier is just incomplete or too soon to tell, or whatever you want to label it. Young, first, second-year rookies, guys you don't ever read on, guys that haven't played before. You got five tiers, Stafford's in that third. He's in that tier of he's got some ability, but he's, he's just not a guy. He's below the guys who are below the studs. But Stafford's above the average, like Ryan Fitzpatrick or Andy Dalton or whatever you want to say. Those are the average guys. Probably have really good supporting casts, limited on ability, good situation, right time, right place, right coaches, but they're not guys. Now, you're not trying to sign either guy to a 10 year deal, but they're sure as hell better than the next group down, which is poop. Okay. Do, do you want to know about the day that you're going to have a nervous breakdown? Uh, sure. Tell me. It, just, 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 just tell me next. It's going to. Okay. I'll tell you next. I, I just, I'll, I'll let me, you know. Allow me to just do some business. But do you, you. do you have an issue with the way I broke quarterbacks down? Of course you do. All right, we'll get to Terry and his moaning on about my breakdown next.